Okay, so this next part of the particle creation is uh, a little more complicated. Um, and it's not more complicated in Stingray, it's more complicated outside of Stingray. So uh, we're going to have to look at some other tools, and I'll show you how we kind of do this kind of stuff. Um, but I'm not going to get into the nitpicky details of how to create a UV animation. Um, I'm just going to show you the process of, once you've got one made, how to get it into Stingray. Um, just because that would be just way too big of a scope. Um, I just can't, I can't do that big of a, a, a you know, uh, a tutorial right now. Okay, so um, I'm just going to do what we've done and I'm just going to kind of bring this particle effect in here and since this one is a UV animation I have it set to uh, not rotate with the camera so I just have to put it in position and as you can see I've just got a, a very simple fire burning, right? Um, and uh, so so what this is, is basically the same as what we just did. Uh, the difference is on the billboard itself, if we, if we go into here and look at the fire, okay, um, you know, you'll see that we have a material billboard. This one is actually even simpler than the, the smoke effect uh, because all of it's really being done in the animation itself. And all we're doing is queuing a UV animation and um, as you can see here, and we're giving it a frames per second, and we're just letting it play. So this is almost acting as a movie controller, uh, more than it is a, a particle effect, technically speaking. Um, what it's basically doing is creating one particle per second, and it's effectively, you know, taking a frame of the animation and putting it on each particle, and each particle is being born in the same place every time. Okay, so it's extremely straightforward. Um, we'll, we'll get to it, but um, where we have to begin is how do I actually get a UV animation into the game engine? Because um, that can be a challenge to do, um, and that's where this is the probably the most complicated, okay? So um, if you are used to After Effects, um, After Effects is the tool that I use to create my animations. Um, and it's, it's a really good tool for this kind of thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you, all right, so I've got this basic animation that I made. If I hit play, uh, it makes, you know, fire burn, right? So I've got a simple animation. This could be made anywhere. You could video a fire. You could do whatever you want, right? Um, and in the end, all you really need is an animation sequence, okay? And then from the animation sequence, you are then going to make a UV tile sheet. A UV sprite sheet is the more common uh, term for it. So um, what I've done is I've kind of picked out an area of my um, of my animation where I know it'll loop okay. Okay, so it's looping and it looks pretty good. It'll always loop. It's not really a problem, right? Like if I were to pick it up at any point in the frame sequence, it's going to be pretty much perfect. Okay, so, um, so here we have the fire burning and I know that that can be pretty much be picked up and repeated anywhere. Um, and you won't see a hiccup or a glitch, right? It's not like fading in and then fading out. And if it was to, you know, get cut off, it would be like weird. Um, you know, it's it's just a it's a loopable animation basically. All right. Um, and then all I do is I just go ahead and I go into my render queue and I output the the files as uh, PNG files. Okay. So I get a whole sequence of PNGs. Um, I will show you. Uh, a couple basics in here in the export. Um, so what I basically do is I just um, I'm just gonna delete this comp, delete, and I'll show you how we're gonna go ahead and export this from here. So I'm just gonna take this composition and I'm gonna go uh, add to render queue. And all I basically do is I set my, my render output to PNG. And um, I don't even do anything else on the export. What I do, though, is I, I do resize it. So if I know that my final uh, UV tile sheet is going to be something like a 2048, which is generally what I use for this type of thing, um, depending, uh, I will then just get my calculator out. Um, figure out my columns and so I'm sorry I'm, I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit and I hope I'm not super confusing uh, but basically 
how how the UV you know let's look at a UV tile sheet that would probably be the best so let's go into Photoshop I'll open up my UV tile sheet just so you can see what the final output is going to be so we know what I'm talking about when I say why I'm doing what I'm doing so let's go to desktop I think I created a copy out there um, fire sequence and comp one and here we go so this is a tile sheet okay um, or a sprite sheet and basically what it is is a sequence of animations that starts from the top left goes across and then goes across and then goes across and then goes across and then goes and cross so you're you're basically moving a playhead from you know here to here to here to here and you're kind of just flip booking through this okay and by the way if you do a flip book animation this would be the same way you would do it um, so so the concept is that you're just you're just creating multiple frames on one texture so now you can just move a playhead across this to make it work and the only thing that's really important about this is knowing how many columns and how many rows okay so I know that I want to have five columns and five rows I could make it two columns and two rows it doesn't really make a difference just as long as I know what I want to end up with okay um, and I'll show you how that plays in Stingray later um, but I know for my purposes I wanted 25 frames uh, to make it kind of a smooth fire burning animation so I did 25 frames so um, in here what I basically do is I say okay I know I want my total size to be 2048 so um, what I what I want to do is figure out what approximately is the math to figure out how many uh, pixels across do I need each frame to be so all I do is go 2048 which is going to be my total size and I'm going to divide that by 5 and I get 409 I'm going to round to 410 so in here I would set my resize value to 410 by 410 okay and that's basically it I hit OK um, and then I'm just going to choose my folder you know pick where I want to output to um, I'm going to go to the desktop again and I'm going to call this um, new folder I'll call it fire 2 fire sequence 2 Ugh, I hate when I do that but stupid caps lock um, and I'm gonna go ahead and save it out save and then I just hit the render queue it renders out my frames Once the frames are rendered, I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize my calculator now, minimize Stingray, and now what I use is a, a program called Gluit, and um, you can pick this up on the web, it's just called Gluit, um, I think it's free, I'm, in fact I'm pretty sure it's free, um, and it's a great little tool for creating these kind of like sprite sheets. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go add. I know that I need 25 frames, so let me find my fire sequence two. And all I'm going to do is grab um, 25 frames. I know that I need 25. I output more than 25, but I only want 25. So I'm going to go from frame 90 to frame 114. That'll make 25 frames. And hit open. It'll then give me this, uh, this sequence and now I can say glue it it gives me the, the necessary parts that I want I hit close I hit save and I just choose where I want to save that to so I'm gonna call this um, sprite sheet or fire sheet fire sheet okay and I'm just gonna save it in the same folder as I created the other ones and hit save and that's it I'm basically done. Um, there is one last step that's a, a good thing to do, and that is to make sure that it actually is an exact, um, you know, either 2048 or 1024 or 512 by 512, one of those, um, because those are just the most optimal for game engines. So uh, I'm just going to open it up, and since we did 210, it's not going to be 1024, it's going to be a little bigger. So I'm just going to open up that sequence. Uh, what did I call it? I called it fire sequence 2 comp. I'm just going to open this guy up 
it's going to be the wrong size. So if I go image, image size, you'll see that it's 20, 2050. I really want it to be 2048. So I'm just going to set that to 2048 and uh, call that done. All right. And then I just go file, save as, or actually I don't even have to do that. I can just go file, save, and I'm done. All right. So now I can import that into Stingray. So let's go into Stingray and let's go into textures and just to prove that it all works I will import this guy when we do this next material um, desktop fire sequence comp one and I'm gonna grab this fire sheet okay so there I've got my fire sheet and it's actually a different fire um, so that's pretty cool so we will now go ahead and create our new particle effect for fire 2 okay so we're going to go create um, particle and we're going to call this fire underscore 2 all right now uh, let's go into the system let's drag it on stage and let's look at what we're going to do here Okay, so fire two. So the first thing I know is I want to grab the billboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my newly created fire sheet and drag that into the billboard. Now that that's done, I know that my UV animation needs to be within, um, so, so how do I explain this? So the UV animation is what your, your column width is going to be and your um, row width or row height is going to be. Now how you deduce this is you just simply take one and divide it by the number of your frames. So if I have five frames across and five frames down I'm just going to go one divided by five equals 0.2 so that is the correct number for that. If you had let's say three frames you know it's going to be the same exact thing. It's going to be let's say it was three across and three down and you had a nine sequence animation um, you would just go uh, one oops clear one divided by three and it would be 0.333 okay so that would be your your input here if you had um, let's say you only had a, a, a sprite sheet that was consisting of three across but six down then you would do two different divisions right you would do um, yeah, so three across would be one divided by three is three, three, three. And if you wanted the six, it would be one divided by six equals 0.166. So you would have, you know, 0 0.033 here, or I'm sorry, 0 0.333, 0 0.333, and 0 0.666. I think that's what it was, right? Is that what I just calculated? 0.166, sorry. 0.166. Okay, so that would give you um, three across and six down. Okay, it's a little complicated. Don't get too confused. Um, for most cases, you're going to have it as a square, so it's going to be you know 0.2 for 0.2 for me um, for five across. Anyway, I don't want to belabor that. You'll figure it out. It's not super hard. Um, just know that you always divide whatever your frame number is by one, and you'll get it. Um, and that's that. So let's go ahead and save that. And you'll see now that we're getting this particle being born, but it shows all the particles, right? It shows all the, the frames of our animation. It's not really cycling through it, okay? So uh, the reason for that is we haven't actually added the animation component yet. So let's go into here and let's go uh, material and we're gonna go UV animation, okay? So once we add that, we should start to see something happen. Okay, so let's save. And now we see that there's only one frame showing. So now what the problem is, is that we're in our UV animation uh, um, node, we're not getting a range. Okay, so what we want to do is say, how many frames of this sequence do we want to play? So we want to do from zero to 24, which would make a total of 25 frames. And now you will start to see uh, this play. 
and I did hit loop and I hit random start just because random starts a nice little feature um, so it's kind of small let's go ahead and make this something like one and one and now we're starting to get a, a nice little little fire animation okay so uh, in the material billboard we're gonna want to do additive blend give it a second to compile so um, so we're starting to get something that works now you'll notice that we're getting this kind of like mushy quality to our animation playback um, so what that what that is is that our emitter rate and our system life is is not uh, not working to our advantage um, so what we really want to do is just increase our um, total to one and we want to make our particle life really really high so I usually set it to a thousand and a thousand um, and you will find that this starts to work a lot more acceptably so um, basically you only want one to ever exist and you just don't want the particle life to be a problem so you just set it really high and the total will always overwrite it so no problem at all okay so uh, so there you have it that's how you're gonna create your your billboard um, uh, fire animation and uh, it's pretty easy pretty straightforward okay so uh, so that's it that's that's really all there is to this type of a particle effect um, you should you should be fine with that with what you've already known so you can change your size of course you can make this two and two and save it out and it'll just be bigger um, but effectively that's all there really is to creating one of these animations all right um, now on mine I didn't want it to rotate so what you can do is so this, this is always gonna face the camera if you don't do what I'm gonna show you um, and most of the times that's what you're gonna want uh, for mine I had a wide one and it was kinda looking weird uh, so I just added the non-rotation component to it so I'll just show you how to do that because it is kind <laughs> because <coughs> it is kind of useful every now and again so let's go into our particle effect so fire 2 and let's go ahead and um, just go ahead add and we're gonna go position control I'm sorry rotation and you want to go um, facing direction box and this is a really weird little little thing here so what I usually do is I just leave it where it, it falls um, and I just rotate it into the position that I want it so you know if I want it to be you know like this is what I would do all right and now it won't rotate anymore um, you can play with that box I've found it to be very difficult to figure out um, so in general rather than trying to make it do what I want I just I just I just move it to where I want it um, it just is a lot easier all right so uh, so that's basically it um, for the for the the UV animation okay um, and next up we're gonna move into the uh, the most complicated um, uh, trail animations okay so we'll do that next um, and it's not even that complicated it's actually pretty easy well with, with what you know now you should be pretty good to go uh, for making particles like that um, and yeah we'll get on to it right next <laughs>